Looking for a new career? Welcome to Do HVAC Training Service Center in North Charleston. Enroll today in our comprehensive HVAC training hands-on field experience-based program covering troubleshooting, maintenance, installation, and more on various HVAC systems and ductwork. We offer EPA and NAIT preparation and testing, along with various certifications. Enjoy payment options. Take advantage of their November specials. Achieve certification in under five months. Enroll now for your new journey of skill development and career advancement. Log on to DEWHVAC. TrainingSC.com to register. Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. All right, before we get to the show, I want to talk to you about Studio because Studio wants to revolutionize the way people see headphones as not just a tech device, but also a fashion accessory. The typical headphones market forces you to choose between either style or tech, but Studio headphones offer both. Studio headphones boast a modern Scandinavian design, plus their products match the quality of the highest rated headphones on the market for just a fraction of the cost, and Studio offers free worldwide shipping. Mm-hmm. Studio's newest and first completely wireless model, the Neva, launched this past May and has quickly proven to be unrivaled for life on the move. Neva wireless headphones have superb connectivity with Bluetooth 4.1 and two and a half hours of music playtime, all without overlooking Studio's distinct modern style. I have it. I love it. They work great. They come in a little case that that keep them together so you don't lose them and also charges them at the same time. Oh, that's so, so cool. smart. I love that. Brill. Mm -hmm. The Neva charging case is also a standalone contemporary interior design piece, and its portable nature allows you to bring it with you wherever you go for an additional two to three charges. So whether you're out chasing adventures or just moonwalking across the living room floor, Guilty. do it without the wires. <laughs> <laughs> the Neva model is available in white and black, plus a special edition limited supply in black gold and white gold. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these things are basically white gold, y'all. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, check mm -hmm. out Studio at studio.com, S-U-D-I-O.com, or on Instagram at studio. And support the show by using our discount code GALS15, G-A-L-S-1-5, with your purchase. That promo code GALS15 gets you 15% off your order, which is great if you're searching for the perfect gifts for this holiday season. And all online orders placed in November and December 2018 will also come with a complimentary gift box so you can get a little something even when you're shopping for everyone else on your list. We did it. <laughs> well, baby, I hear the blues are calling. <laughs> blues are calling. Um, <laughs> you are listening to Wine and Crime. Wine and Crime. Oh, okay. The podcast with three friends. <laughs> Toss salads <laughs> and scrambled eggs. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> and also Chug Wine and also Chat True Crime and also. And Frasier. <laughs> Unleash <laughs> their worst Frasier songs and all. Frasier conspiracy theories. And also. <laughs> their worst. But maybe. <laughs> <laughs> when we were when we were on the road for our mini tour, we would like see a police car and just start speculating, quote unquote, wildly about what they were up to. And it turned into this stupid tangent that just drove Scott insane, where we would give a different weird theory and then just next person would go, but maybe <laughs> there would be and insert their just, theory. Just long enough of a pause before the next person said. <laughs> But maybe. maybe. And then Scott got super fed up after like the 25th, but maybe. And he was like, but maybe the police officer is a woman. And we were all really ashamed of our internalized misogyny. And then we stopped playing for a while. <laughs> yes, that happened. Okay. All of this is real. Okay, who are we? I'm Kenyon. But maybe. But maybe. I'm Lucy. <laughs> And maybe I'm Amanda. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we have a special <laughs> fan pick episode for you this week. And that is by fan picker Remy Juarez. 
But maybe <laughs> it's pronounced. Somebody else suggested to Remy maybe. that they do this fan pick, and maybe okay, I'm done. Maybe okay. you should <laughs> cut all of this out. <laughs> never, never. All right, our fan picker is Remy Juarez, and our topic is isotope analysis, which love. I'm going to be honest, I knew nothing about, but now I'm obsessed. Uh Uh-huh. I thought isotopes are what they put in Gatorade (laughs) to make you (laughs) hydrated. (laughs) Which, like, kind of is true in a way. There are absolutely isotopes in Gatorade. Well, Uh yeah, but they're, okay. All right. We'll get into it. Lucy will illuminate. Anthropology. (laughs) Need I remind okay, you? Okay, not as bad. <laughs> what is our fucking wine crime pair <laughs> for isotopes? My isotopes are super low, you guys. I gotta go <laughs> grab a Gatorade. <laughs> you are diabetic. <laughs> I am. Um, this week we are pairing isotope analysis with Winks 2016 baseline. Love Sarah. it. Yeah, because, like, isotopes are sort of, like, the baseline of what <laughs> remains in our bones and shit. <laughs> Calm down. Okay. Calm down. I-, I was thinking, like, Calm down. you need to compare your isotope analysis yeah. to a baseline. That, too. Analysis. <laughs> that You're too. both driving me insane <laughs> that with too. what you think it's, an isotope is. We're spot is. on. <laughs> we're spot on. It's like remnants of your food. <laughs> It's fine. No, um, it's not. <laughs> this wine comes far. Shh. <laughs> Food contributes to your bones. It's not bones Shh. either. I am a scientist. Um, <laughs> this is from our amazing sponsor, Wink Wine Club, which if you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. Wink has been sponsoring us for quite a while now, and they are an online wine club with a crazy awesome inventory of wines that can be shipped to your door or Walgreens or place of business. Um, I would highly recommend checking them out. You can take a little flavor quiz so that you can get acclimated with what wines would work with your palate. Or you can go, screw that, (laughs) and just scroll through their inventory, which is what I like to do, and just go completely bananas and put way too many bottles in your cart and then realize you're having 50 bottles of wine shipped to your house and maybe that's a really bad idea and your neighbor's going to steal them and you should slow your roll. (laughs) So go check them out. If you put four or more bottles in that box... They take care of the shipping, which is super awesome. And if it's your first time ordering through them, use link trywink.com forward slash gals. You're going to get 20 bucks off your first order. Again, that's trywink, T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com forward slash gals for 20 bucks off your first order. And we highly recommend joining Wink. We usually give a heads up of what upcoming Wink wine pairings we are going to feature. So you can actually drink along with the wine we're drinking. Oh, oh my God. We're it's so connected. So um, Aren't we? The wine pairings are on the wine tab uh, on our website, Wine and Crime Podcast. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So, baseline Syrah. This is a small lot, single vineyard Syrah coming from the John Sebastiano Vineyard, mm. which is one of the most respected vineyards in Santa Rita Hills, California. And this is a really cool viticultural area that we're going to talk about for a moment. It has many hills and varying aspects. So this vineyard has a variety of microclimates, and its windy location helps to naturally limit yields. So it's not like grape crazy. They get to be really (laughs) precise with what they grow there. It's located in the cool climate region of Santa Barbara County, where the morning time fog and afternoon Pacific breeze create an ideal situation for viticulture. So it's like cool in the morning... Um, with that breeze coming off the Pacific Ocean to sort of warm things up throughout the day, and then it cools I know where I'm moving. Yeah, for real. The hills run east to west, which allows cool ocean breezes from the nearby Pacific Ocean to enter the valley created by the hills and create a cool microclimate. So that's like just a little blast of that coolness throughout the day. When combined with the rocky nature of the area, the Santa Rita Hills area is a well-suited spot for the growing of Pinot Noir grapes specifically, because as we've learned over the almost 100 episodes of doing this show, Pinot Noir can definitely thrive in a cooler climate um, and with rocky soil, which is kind of cool. The region is best known for its Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, (laughs) 
<laughs> and Syrah varietals. Uh, this particular Syrah is harvested early with 10% Viognier mm. that's kind of interspersed with it. Um, it's aged in natural French oak for 18 months, so that really mellows it out and adds a lot of complexity to the flavor. It is a complex, dark, slightly meaty mm. wine and perfect for aging. So the one we're opening today is a 2016. If you have a nice like 52 degree spot in your house, out of the sun, and you want to leave this bottle there for a couple more years, could be really cool to age it, but I do not have that kind of patience. Um, <laughs> this is a medium bordering on full-bodied wine, 13.1% ABV, and a popper. And Kenyon really wanted another opportunity <laughs> to redeem herself I'm this gonna week. I'm going to try. <laughs> She's begging. This bottle of so. Baseline Syrah survived the trip back to South Africa in a suitcase full of Parmesan. So... It better, bl- padded it by better Parmesan. treat me not loose Parmesan. I'm not a monster, <laughs> although it you is made out. Of, it is made out of packing peanuts with loose Parmesan like sawdust. <laughs> you have like a the TSA same inspected this bag like pamphlet <laughs> laying on top. <laughs> She cre- she treats it like fun dip. She's got your yeah. finger wet, sticks it in there, and licks the parmesan. Yeah. Done. Okay. You you suck on a on a hard mozzarella stick, and then you dip that in. <laughs> yup. I'm creating savory yeah. fun dip. This will sell in the uh, adult actually, market. That's we're now billionaires. Okay. Um, Done. All right. I've already got it started. So now let's just see if it'll mm-hmm, play mm-hmm. ball. And so far, I hope not, not. great. <laughs> my hands are so sweaty oh my god how are you so bad okay. at this like oh, how? oh it's coming it's coming listen it's not that close to That's the mic said. wow wow oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was good that was a nice oh, pop left field pop <laughs> Completely unexpected pop. Guys, my oh hands were my. so sweaty, and then I'm wearing these like deliciously cozy pants from a retailer that I won't name because they're not paying us. And <laughs> <laughs> the bottle started slipping, and I thought I was gonna jack myself in the face. <laughs> I fully <laughs> wish that. What would you guys have done if I had knocked myself out? And you just heard like ah. crickets. <laughs> Like Josie barking. I mean, we would have gone on yeah, with the like, show. What are okay, you going to do? We can, we can do it. The show must go <laughs> on. Cheers. Cheers. A cheers. Right, Lucy, explain to us what an isotope is, because apparently neither one of us learned despite writing our cases. <laughs> it's your food. Well, I have a very <laughs> not so elegant analogy to deliver to you that will definitely help you figure this out. You are what you eat. Okay, backing up. First, what's an isotope? <laughs> I'm ignoring Amanda. <laughs> Who, what the else definition is, is, quote, each of two or more forms of the same element that contain equal numbers of protons but different numbers of neutrons in their nuclei and hence differ in relative atomic mass but not in chemical properties. I'm bored. Electrolytes, exactly, like we said. So I was already <laughs> exactly confused what we by said. this, so I went to chem4kids.com. <laughs> yes. Now explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> And uh, I concluded that this just isn't going to be one of those subjects that I can fully wrap my head around. So it boils down to this. And keep in mind, this was followed by an analogy. So bear with me. So carbon, which is a pretty popular element here on Earth, comes in a few different styles, Mm. let's say. There's C12 and also C13 for two examples. That number is the mass So chemically speaking, they react the same way. They're both carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six, which means it has six protons and six electrons. Um, Both C12 and C13 have the same atomic number. So it has the same number of protons and electrons, which means the only difference between the two is that it has an extra neutron. So... I am so glad I don't do the background. It's like, oh my God. It took me all morning to fucking figure this out. So here's my not-so-elegant analogy. You ready? Yeah. 
And keep yeah. in mind also that I started this analogy before I fully figured out what the fuck was going on, so it goes downhill very so rapidly. So then you really pushed. No, this is to your analogy. This is my analogy. Oh dang! Okay. So imagine carbon is a cat. <laughs> oh no! Okay. There are many cats. All are carbon. Most yeah. cats mm-hmm. wear red wigs and white pants. Why don't you just Some- go with cat fur? It wasn't as funny. <laughs> Don't distract her. And also, it wouldn't make sense later on, so just sh- sit the oh. fuck down and shut up. Yeah, it makes so much sense now, too, so this Some is cats great. wear blue wigs and white pants, and a few other cats wear uh-huh. yellow wigs and white pants. The difference in wigs represents the difference in number of neutrons that the cat holds in its precious little heart, which is also the nucleus. Mm-hmm. Each yeah. pair or group of cats or clouder of cats in different wigs are isotopes of each other. They're all cats. They all sprint around the house when they have to poop, but they have different weights depending on their wigs. <laughs> okay. Fun yes. fact. This makes perfect If the cats sense. were to change their pants or the number of <laughs> electrons in their tiny little hearts, they would be ions or maybe lions. Oh, oh my, god. my god! Okay, so if a cat takes off its I hate wig, this. it's still I'm getting a cat. there. Okay. I'm getting there. There's, oh, more? there's more. I'm completely. This is lost. a very complex. <laughs> this is making it worse. I don't. You just keep yeah, going. I'm trying. The red wigs. The red <laughs> wigs are stable. The blue and yellow wigs are not stable, aka radioactive. I think you could argue that a cat in a wig is not stable no matter <laughs> no. what. The cats in the red wigs are stable. So all the cats... The owner of the cat shut is the not fuck stable. Up. So all the cats go to a party <laughs> with some dogs and some bats and some crocodiles and some monkeys. And they're all wearing wigs and pants. Different colored wigs. There's a dress code. How yeah. high are you right now? <laughs> I'm telling you, I started this analogy before I fully learned it. So this is what's happening. (laughs) Okay. So they all dance for hours and days Mm -hmm. and maybe hundreds and thousands of years. The red, the cats in the red wigs are having fun. They're flirting. They're cavorting while the cats with the blue and yellow wigs, they get tired. Some of them get hot and frustrated and they tear off parts of their wigs in order to cool off. So these Mm. animals that are tearing off their wigs are exhibiting radioactive decay. Mm. So they now represent a radiogenic isotope. So the time that it takes for each animal to get hot is its decay rate or half-life. You guys remember learning about Mm half-lives of elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a million half-lives ago. (laughs) I don't remember any of that shit. So all of the cats tore off their wigs after 5,730 years because that is the... Half life of carbon. Cool. Okay. So I think this analogy has gone as far as it can. <laughs> or farther. I think I've never been more confused <laughs> about anything in my Each life. Each cat is and an atom of carbon. I am going to yep, send okay. that much this I get. episode to Allie Ward and be like, should Lucy become no. a science communicator? <laughs> Please do. do. Not. Please do. <laughs> I oh really God. should have been a chemistry God, teacher. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, somebody listening definitely has like a chemistry final tomorrow, and I just totally fucked them. <laughs> yeah, they are fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, tomorrow's Sunday. Oh, wait, no. We're recording. Yeah. If you today. were listening, it would tomorrow make sense. Tomorrow is Friday. Okay. So, isotope analysis considers the isotopic signature or fingerprint of the examined material, which is a ratio of non-radiogenic stable isotopes, so those would be the cats in the red wigs, stable radiogenic isotopes, or unstable radioactive isotopes. So they do this by using isotope ratio mass spectrometry against an isotopic reference material, which could be known as our baseline. Baseline! Mm-hmm. Oh, there he is. It all circles Which would be back. like the perfect cat with the perfect stable red wig who can dance for 5,730 years. Precisely. That's our baseline. And not one moment longer. Correct. Well, actually twice that long because of twice half-life. that long. Whatever. And not one I, moment I longer. Science. 
Isotope analysis can inspect organic and inorganic materials to determine the flow of energy through a food web. So, like, what eats what? Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's not the only fucking thing that it does, though. <laughs> I didn't you say You basically it was. did. It's just the most important She knew food thing. was involved. Yep, it always so, like, is. If you're examining the stomach contents of a bear and it has blueberries in it, they could use isotopic analysis to figure out whether the bear ate blueberries or the bear ate a bird who ate blueberries. Mm -hmm. And where the blueberries come from. And then you can identify the region that the bear traveled through and all kinds of Mm -hmm. weird shit. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. They can also use it to reconstruct past environmental and climatic conditions. So, like, this is how they study climate change, which is a science people not nah, i don't know i don't trust it they can use it to investigate human it feels pretty cold for the warm <laughs> warming of Good the globe job. to investigate human you and got, animal diets so back to the food web they can use it for food authentication which we will get to archaeology paleontology studying ecosystems geology and more Amazing. And so much so more. So with food authentication, you can verify the origins of the food. You can track a problem through the supply chain. Um, you can verify whether something is organic, like, you know, labeled organic, or grown with a certain type of fertilizer. Um, this type of testing can be done on literally any kind of food, from bananas to tomatoes to dairy products to honey. And we've also talked before about how wine forgery is actually really difficult to detect. Remember Mm -hmm. our wine crimes episode? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, So we did talk briefly about that and about this in that episode, but um, just to remind us all, investigators can search for trace amounts of cesium-137, which is a sweaty, blue-wigged cat that was released during (laughs) nuclear weapons testing. (laughs) Oh, okay. I knew the nuclear weapons thing came in at some point. Mm Mm-hmm. So they can determine whether that wine was bottled before or after 1945. Um, Ooh, that's kind of cool. Cesium-137 is found in soil and grapes and is not dangerously radioactive, so, like, chill the fuck out. So they, can they, also, they can also test this element for how much of it is present, like, not just whether it's there, but how much is there, and thereby pinpoint where it was made geographically. Mm. Cool. Um, so when we're talking about forensics, in archaeology, it's usually the bones and the teeth that are the most helpful in identifying environmental factors because isotopic oxygen is ingested and stored there. And it helps to form the bones and tooth enamel by incorporating into the calcium that our tooth enamel and our bones are made out of. Ah, but not the pulp. pulp, The enamel. Correct. The pulp is your DNA. The enamel is your isotope, like your environmental factors. Right. This is so weird. Mm -hmm. It gets weirder. Um, So your bones turn over. (laughs) Like, they fully replace themselves about every 10 to 15 years. What? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. They no, do. they don't. No. Where I'm sorry. Did, I can't accept this. Where the old ones go? <laughs> yeah. Do yeah, you, you poop them, them out? out? Like, what is... Do, what? It just goes in... Uh, where else would they go? I Every 10 years, I'm shitting bones. You're shitting bones constantly. And making room for... Like bone for, dust. No, no. Yeah, just dust. I can't do this. Guys, I can't do this. I have to go. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. I have to go. <laughs> I, I, oh, oh, I, I mean, your skin... I can't wrap my head around my bones regenerating over the course of a 10-year period. Think about it. They're if not you, totally sure. It's very bone, hard to measure. It grows back, so it's not just that one part's going to grow, though all of it's growing all the time. I mean, I understand that. I just... It's a little just not okay uh, with it. Yeah. I'm not okay with it. I don't know my <laughs> body. Someone call the manager. She's not okay with this. <laughs> yes, I need to speak to a manager of science. <laughs> I have many complaints. So here's... Here's a really cool fact. So if an individual inhabited the same region for at least 10 years, then the isotopic oxygen ratio in the environment would be the same as that ratio in their bones. My bones are going to be all kinds of fucked up. 
My isotope ratios are going to be like a fucking quilt. Oh, wait till we get to your hair. Oh, no. Oh, God. (laughs) So teeth, however, do not replenish themselves over time, so they would reflect the oxygen ratios of where that person was born and even information about that person's mother if she chose to breastfeed. Mm Mm-hmm. So speaking of breastfeeding, scientists have used isotopic analysis to determine when different groups of people in the past weaned their children and what types of food they used in the interim, like Gerber baby food style. That's amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. That's really okay. cool and terrifying, and I'm still stuck on my regrowing. I'm still stuck on the cats with wigs dancing and sweaty. Oh, that I blocked that out as it <laughs> no, was No, you happening. didn't. You just talked the whole fucking way through it. <laughs> Everyone has different ways of coping. Okay. Hair. Because hair growth is primarily a function of diet and especially water intake, scientists can test a strand of hair and figure out where the water came from that the person was drinking while their hair was growing. And Poland since, uh, Spring. <laughs> Fiji. <laughs> Sparkling plain. Okay. And since a hair grows and stays on the head over time, they can also track where that person has been. So in this way, it makes, it makes isotopic analysis sometimes more valuable to an investigation than DNA because it shows where you've been and for how long that's crazy they can also use fingernails blood and soft tissues but these decay very rapidly so they're not often as useful and they're also more prone to contamination so they like can if also you get a use... blood transfusion kind of thing i mean like if you found a body if you found a body, their bones, what their bones are made out of is not going to be as contaminated as their blood or their skin. Right. But like contaminated how? Like by incorporating other isotopes from the environment. OK. Um, so they can also test explosives since those are chock full of animals and wigs. They can yeah. also help determine country of origin Ditto for determining drug trafficking routes as, like, distinguishing poppies from Southwest Asia versus Southeast Asia or cocaine from Bolivia versus Colombia. Very cool. You can trace that shit. The good stuff versus the knockoffs. Right, exactly. The discount cocaine. Some Dion limitations. sunglasses versus Dior sunglasses, <laughs> okay. which I fell for. Kenyon's Dion sunglasses <laughs> are my favorite. <laughs> You were literally Alana Glazer in that episode of Broad City where she's like climbing My down a favorite manhole episode. to get a re- she <laughs> to get a really good deal out of bed. on a headstand against the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm on the phone. Oh, those women are so brilliant. Okay. I love them. Some limitations of isotope analysis includes diagenesis, which is the chemical and structural changes that occur in the materials as they are exposed to the environment and begin to decay. So, Kenyon, to answer your question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if the material was burned, for example, then the exposure to that chemical process alone can contaminate the sample and throw off all the ratios and just totally fuck it up. And because isotopes are everywhere in the environment, they're everywhere, they're in everything, they're my father now, <laughs> I'm, I'm their daughter now. Um, it's everywhere, it's in everything. <laughs> Um, contamination is very difficult to prevent in general. Also, a lot of ratio values of different elements overlap, so it can be hard to distinguish one from another. For example, if you were looking at a person's diet and they had, you know, a lot of different types of food, especially if it was modern day, all of our food chains, our food comes from fucking everywhere. Right. So, so it's way more complicated now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um. So, yeah, like I just said, with modern food production, it can be hard, if not impossible, to tell whether a person traveled to a certain location and consumed a certain food or whether that food was imported. And they just ate it on their fucking couch watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, it is super expensive to do. So this isn't this isn't something as helpful as this kind of analysis is. It's it's not done very commonly. It's very time consuming. And it's very expensive right now, but still very, very cool. And I'm excited to see where this is in like 20 years. It's some futuristic shit. Yeah. 
This is wild. This is very mm-hmm. like Minority Report esque, Gattaca esque. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it. So even though some of us did not find my analogy that helpful, <laughs> now you know a little mm, bit some more. Some of us did, definitely did not. Well, <laughs> if you have a cat collection uh, with wigs and pants in different colors. <laughs> You most certainly <laughs> need talk space. And can I be your friend? <laughs> <laughs> and Lucy's personal contact information, <laughs> which I will reveal now. Um, just <laughs> Today's show is sponsored by Talkspace, the online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. All you need is a computer with internet connection or the Talkspace mobile app. I use the app personally. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That means you can improve your mental health, even if you've had trouble making time for it in the past. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just a friendly reminder, therapy is not just about venting your deepest, most Freudian innermost thoughts or digging (laughs) into your childhood (laughs) trauma, which most people do have. That's part of it. But it's also about the practical, everyday strategies for stress management. Hi. Mm -hmm. Living a happier life. Hi. Um, (laughs) Hi. Having a therapist just provides you a designated go-to person that you can talk to. This person is trained to listen and help you make positive changes. It's completely changed my life. I used to do in-person therapy pretty consistently on and off, but I found that it was really hard to commit to with how crazy busy my schedule is. And now, especially being in school, where do people have the time? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But having it in my pocket when I'm in the moment, like I'm losing my mind is extremely, extremely helpful. I can't recommend Mm -hmm. it highly enough. And the Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life's challenges that we all face. To match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals and use the code gals, G-A-L-S, to get $45 off your first month and show your support for this show. Love it. So again, treat your brain. That, treat your brain. That's gals <laughs> and talkspace.com forward slash gals. Treat your brain. Using millions of real women's measurements, Third Love designs its bras with breast size and shape in mind. Important. F- for an <laughs> impeccable fit and incredible feel. I've got some nice, like, 70s ski slopes happening. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. I'm more of a low-hanging fruit kind of gal. Yeah. The East-West situation. Yeah. <laughs> they are escaping each other. It's, anyway, Third Love is real, y'all. And they have designed their perfect fit quiz uh, with women's real measurements in mind. Um, and it really pays off. Yeah, that Fit Finder quiz is super awesome. Also, you all know we love a good quiz. Mm -hmm. Um, So you just answer a few simple questions. They've got some really nice illustrations for you to like be like, oh, yeah, those are my boobs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Looks familiar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They also have a uh, maybe one boob is bigger than the other option, which Mm -hmm. I fall into said category. (laughs) So they fit me with a bra that, you know, has some extra padding. You can move it to one side or the other. And my boobs look even. Yeah, for it's the amazing. first time in life. I'm it, they so also happy offer, for you. They offer Thank half you. cup sizing, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, their cups go from A through H. They've got bands up to 48, mm-hmm. and 50% of women fall between those standard cup sizes. So, yeah, like Amanda said, Third Love invented those half cup sizing. And so it's, smart. It's awesome. Fits so well. I love it. So, Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So, right now, they are offering our listeners 15% off your first order. All you got to do is go to thirdlove.com slash gals to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. Again, that's thirdlove.com slash gals for 15% off today. Treat your gams. (laughs) Okay, um, a lot of this info is from an article by Bob Grant, (laughs) Blart Blant, published in The Scientist (laughs) in January 2017. This is going to be a while. I'm going to start to color. No, I'm going. I love it. Okay. I'm still coloring. Summer of 2014, Missouri. I don't say Missouri because I'm not from Vera. 
pretty um, sure you've made that exact joke before. There's no way. Then <laughs> then that's proof that there's no free will. Because that's then that means it's just <laughs> neurons firing in my brain and that's a weird pathway proof that of exists. God. Okay. There definitely is no such thing as free will. But go on. Okay. Tony Wheatley. Uh, then a detective at the Morgan County Sheriff's Office went to a home just outside of Versailles, Missouri to investigate a reported suicide attempt. Police knocked on the door of retired archaeologist Gary Rex Walters. Oh, cool. <laughs> Gary Rex, Rex. the archaeologist? Yeah. He's I don't like that. not the hero. Um, no. But no one answered. Police entered the home to complete the welfare check. <clears throat> no one was home, but the police noticed marijuana pipes in plain view. And because of this, they were able to go back and at- obtain a search warrant and then, like, come back to the home to do a full search. That's kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was 2014. I feel like a lot's changed since then in terms of marijuana. Maybe not in Missouri, but. Okay, on the second visit to Gary Rex Walters' home, and yes, I'm going to keep saying his full name because it's priceless, <laughs> authorities found four open wooden coffins. Oh, cool. Chock full of human remains. Oh! Why? In, though? But including why, though? bones, teeth, and skulls. Cool. There were 15 skeletons <laughs> in total across four coffins. Wow, they crammed them in. Crammed in, like piles of bones. Dang. Bless it. Detective Wheatley confiscated the coffins along with their grisly contents and sent wait, the wait, jump- wait, 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 wait. Are they fully skeletonized? There's no, like... <laughs> There's a variety soft tissue. Okay. of decomposition. I don't believe there's any soft tissue, but the remains are in various s- states of disrepair. Um, disrepair. So. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said disrepute. I've been drinking more for this episode than I typically do already, so I, I can love it so okay, much. Okay, trying to catch up. <laughs> so, um... The detective confiscates the coffins along with their contents, sends the jumble of bones to the St. Louis Medical Examiner's office. The forensic anthropologist there, Lindsay Trammell, recalled that, quote, there were different levels of preservation slash disrepute throughout the remains. (laughs) (laughs) Some of the bones indeed looked ancient and were, quote, falling apart, but others seemed in much better shape. Gary Rex Walters claimed he had excavated the remains near Iztapa, present-day Guatemala, sometime in the 1970s, and he produced decades-old documentation from the Guatemalan government to prove his legal ownership. So he was like, nah, it's cool, I'm an archaeologist, I got these on a dig years ago, they're just chilling in my basement, no big deal. I need to be an archaeologist. But Detective Wheatley wasn't convinced these documents applied to all of the seized remains because there were only four coffins, but 15 bodies. He had suspicions that Gary Rex may have been involved in the black market for bones illegally obtained slash fucking stolen from local Native American burial grounds in central Missouri. There's apparently a black market. For that. The people are buying them for like. Yep. Mummy? Pe- I don't. Yeah. For <laughs> Lucy's like, <laughs> for what's like- the website? Where do I go? <laughs> I'm typing this in. Mummia.gov. Um, <laughs> dot edu. Do, dot does he take PayPal? Dot isotopes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and just by eyeballing the remains, the forensic anthropologist. <laughs> I know, isn't that sentence gross? You're welcome. <laughs> Just by eyeballing the corpses, Ew. the forensic anthropologist <laughs> believed that they were from different ancestral groups and therefore not all ancient remains from the same geographic area as Gary Rex had oh my God. claimed. 
simply somebody by been traveling and collecting. Simply by eyeballing. Simply by cornballing. <laughs> Of course, in modern times, people from different ancestral groups often live together amongst each other. Um, but the native peoples who occupied the Iztapa area in present-day Guatemala, where Gary Rex claimed to have obtained the remains, had abandoned that area around 1350, well before... Mm, his story's not adding yes, up. well before European colonization meaning that the DNA from ancient remains in this area should only reveal Native American links. There shouldn't be any other ancestral groups in there because they, sh they weren't there yet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Quote. Okay. 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 The plot <laughs> thickens. The cat wig the changes eyeball color. Thickens. They don't change color. The cat changes wigs. It don't Ooh, change the cat wigs. doesn't change wigs. The cat, Did you dances? Learn the cat takes off its <laughs> pants. You learned nothing. <laughs> it dances until it gets sweaty and it has to take off its wig or hot. parts of its wig fall out. Yeah, then it's the radioactive. Gets hot. <laughs> oh my god, I hate this fucking analogy. So oh my god! If you're if this is your the first episode of Lighting Crime, we sincerely <laughs> apologize. The it's not always this party. bad slash great. It's usually pretty okay. bad. <laughs> so quote. This is actually a great sample. I tried episode, to make learning about isotopes remotely no. interesting. Okay. okay Failed. No. So no. There, there should someone be. out there is going to appreciate it. It's obviously not you. There shouldn't be any European or African ancestral links in any of the bones because they weren't there yet. Okay. Got so, it. The forensic anthropologist Lindsay Trammell wanted to test her hypothesis. So she got it, got Lindsay. It. So she sent samples uh. to two other badass female forensic anthropologists. Yes. Got it. Like literally all of the scientists that worked on this case happened to be women, and I love that. Um, mm -hmm. So she'd worked with these two other anthropologists previously, so she, like, had a relationship with them. So one was uh, Dr. Chris Aaron Hughes, and the other was Dr. Chelsea Juarez. Oh, my, oh my God, it's the same last name as our fan picker. Ooh. Incredible. What, what are the odds? What are the chances? Okay, William so to Juan. <laughs> that's a movie. <laughs> In my defense, that's a movie. Oh, my God. So these scientists <laughs> perform genome sequencing and isotope analysis, respectively, on the remains. Dr. Hughes tested for mitochondrial haplogroups which are genetic signatures that are associated with geographic regions. The fun uh -huh. fact, the acronym for that is HA. <laughs> <laughs> I left that out of my notes, but I like Haplo it. Haplo groups, it's HA. It's haplo something else that starts with an A that make haplo groups, I believe. Okay, okay. HA. So uh, this would determine whether or not they were consistent with an individual that was um, African, Native American, European, slash Caucasian, whatever. Dr. Juarez analyzed the, quote, relative abundances and ratios of isotopic forms of common elements, which can yield clues about where the deceased individual lived from birth to death. Using mass spectrometry, which is the hardest word I've ever had to say, Dr. Juarez. Yeah, don't even. <laughs> Dr. Juarez tested bone and tooth samples from 10 crania. She focused on the crown of the first permanent molar, which starts forming in utero and finishes developing by the age of three. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Bodies are so gross, and yeah. I hate them. The more I learn about the human body, the more I'm like, yeah, Ugh. it's real bad. Rather it's be a cat in a wig. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Um, and then quantifying the amounts of isotopic strontium in the skeletal materials or skeletal materials, if you're British. Oh, she no. then... <laughs> Advertisement. <laughs> Aluminium. 
Bin. Aluminium. <laughs> bin. What? Trash can. Did you just... Oh, bin. I thought you said thin. <laughs> I was like, that's the same here. <laughs> Table. Oh, it's the same. Trolley. Okay. She then compared those levels with maps of known isotope distributions in both coastal Guatemala and the St. Louis, Missouri region. All right. Missouri. Missouri. I think I have uh, photos on the blog of those isotope maps. There's yes. one. Yes, 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 I'm yes, taking yes, yes, a look. I'm checking it twice. There is a map of the United States. Which map are we looking at? It's the one that looks like yeah, a weather map. Oh. Yeah. Isotopes are coming to town. Cool, cool, cool. cool. I love yeah. this. Yeah. You're so welcome. So that'll be on the blog, y'all. Um, so isomapping slash isoscaping, different than manscaping. Isoscating. <laughs> I want to go ice. Researchers can create isotope maps for a handful of elements such as oxygen, hydrogen, and strontium using values from human tissues, soil, or rainwater, or hair, because the map that I have is hair. For example, oxygen isotope ratios are derived from observed isotope ratios in tap water and hair samples. Such maps are used by forensic investigators to reconstruct the geographic origin or travel history of either victims or suspects. And I liked this explanation by geochemist Gabe Bowen, which is slightly less confusing than the cat analogy. <laughs> yeah. I think it makes perfect sense. Oh, ice escapes, it's unforgettable, I'll give you that. <laughs> um, ice escapes are trying to take our understanding of the physical, biological, and chemical systems that control isotope variation and turn those into predictive maps that provide a fingerprint for interpreting forensic data. It would be like if you wanted to know where a letter came from in the mail. It's got a zip code on it. You need a map of all the zip codes across the U.S. to interpret to figure out where it came from. Doesn't that Stupidest make sense? Stupidest fucking cut, analogy I've cut. ever heard. <laughs> Where are the cats with okay. me? Suspicions <laughs> mounting. <laughs> so we will get to the scientific findings in this case. So we're just glossing over that terrible in analogy. A moment. The zip codes on. make sense. Got Come it. on. Yes, you're totally okay. right. Doesn't explain radioactivity. Just saying. All right. Let's get back to the investigation from law enforcement's perspective. So Detective Wheatley's suspicions were growing he looked into Gary Rex Walters' background and discovered that in the 1990s, the archaeologist had stolen human remains that he was responsible for relocating from a historic African-American cemetery in St. Louis to make room for a transportation infrastructure project. So they were, the city was expanding the light rail line yeah, and they, they had to move a whole cemetery. They had to move a whole cemetery, and because Ooh. the cemetery was Ooh. historic and for African-American individuals, it, it was, these individuals at the time were like, you know, of a lower socioeconomic class, and so the cemetery was like not super organized, and there were like some mass graves and a lot of unmarked graves, and it was kind of like a cluster. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I always wondered how they relocate cemeteries. I feel like we've talked about this before. Well, they hire contract archaeologists like Gary Rex Walters to oversee it so that they can make sure that, like, one, they can keep track of who's who in the ground, and two, like, make sure that, like, body sure. A stays together and then gets reburied as body A in another place. And probably also so that in most cases, this one excluded, obviously, but they're, like, handled with professional care and respect. That it's was, not just, like, construction so. workers. That was the goal. This project got a lot of heat for its numerous fuck-ups, including Gary Rex Walters, mm. but also oh um, there were accusations of, like, construction crews with heavy machinery just, like, coming in and digging shit up and f fucking everything up and, like, 
remains not being handled with dignity and respect, so it can run the gamut. So, wow. meanwhile, this... And, like, it also freaks me out because, like, looting can be Oh, a thing. we will get to that. Oh, no. Also, Great. the city spent, like, tens of millions of dollars to relocate this cemetery, and, like, they still fucked it up a million times. Wow. So... Gary Rex Walters was a contractor on the project, and his company was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, but he had contradicting claims about the accusations from the time. First, he said that he only stole the remains as leverage because he was owed money for his work on the project, and he wanted to make sure that he would be paid. So all of Trump's contractors okay. have apartments full of corpses. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, it would be the only way for them to maybe get paid. Full of Trump's wigs. Um, God. But then well. at another point, Gary Rex said that he merely took the remains for his personal research purposes. <laughs> Fucking feel you. That, though. I feel that. <laughs> no. These are people. Well, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, though. Okay. So he claimed to be studying Stop. the aging processes of lower socioeconomic class African Americans from the time period, but like this was not an official study by any means. Yeah. Um, probably a better way to do that. Yeah. He was, it was not, he wasn't actually studying shit. And also, it was yeah. just him like fiddling around with stolen femurs in his basement. <laughs> That'll be on my epitaph. Run of oh, the God. mill. <laughs> Fiddling around. Your, your tombstone is going to need to be enormous yeah. for all the epitaphs that we tracking. have to include on it. Can the wine and crime It has to be a scroll Twitter like account, 15 feet make high. Make a list of all of our, that's going to be on my epitaph. Be a mausoleum. Seriously. Who, yeah, a uh, fan who is tracking this, please come forward. We <laughs> oh have my needs. God, it's going to be like the Vietnam War Memorial. Okay. There's a running Google Doc. <laughs> For one God person. bless the vitamins. That's not what I meant. I just meant that it's oh a lot of words God. carved in stone. Okay. Right, right, right. So. <laughs> we get you. I mean, we know you're a monster, but. I'm glad that you okay. cleared that up for the That's rest of We might be shocked at your catlessness. Okay, cat catlessness. <laughs> so, at your cat wiglessness. They're so sweaty. I am so sweaty. I'm almost reaching my half life. So, at a press conference at the time, <laughs> Gary Rex Walters stated, "Quote: I can account for every body that was in my possession. Well, I don't have anything to hide or to fear." I mean, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> it counts for something, I you, guess. You do, kind of, yeah. but. You certainly were not allowed to take those bodies that are in your possession, no. sir. That's one of the many <laughs> crimes you have committed in this situation. So the issue was resolved, more or less, when he returned the 28 bodies he had stolen and received $90,000 in compensation on the same day. Why? Why would they, they pay didn't want him? him to sue and they didn't want to bother suing him. So they just fired him and were like, hey, give us those bodies back and we'll pay you. And he was like, OK, fine. <laughs> I'm in the wrong business. I'll steal a bunch of bodies if it means all I have to do is return them and get like <laughs> yeah. 90 grand. Let's right. do it. That's like a hostage situation. But yeah, <laughs> I'm in. Well, can they really be hostages if they're already dead? So. <laughs> <laughs> Victimless and crime. The Who's really They're hurting not, here? Who's really not hurting? Not a victimless here? crime, and we will get to it. <laughs> so, of course, it's not a victimless. <laughs> crime. I have a photo of my cat in a wig that will be on the blog. By the way, <laughs> oh, is it no. a blue wig? Okay, what is it? A blue wig or a it, red wig? It's a it's a multicolored wig. Oh God, that was not in the analogy. No. What do the multicolors mean? <laughs> Haven't figured that out yet. I'm not a fucking chemist. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. S 
Not a regular mom. I'm a cat. Still, <laughs> the incident had broader implications. For a start, Gary Rex Walters' <laughs> supervisor was fired for his failure to stop Gary Rex Walters' misbehavior and misconduct. I hate the name Gary Rex Walters <laughs> I know. So that's why you saying it. It's the grossest. Yeah. I like um, it. Also, isn't it, like, precisely the name of a dude that would do this? Yeah. Yes, like how on The Office, the Scranton Strangler is, like, William Howard Scub <laughs> or something. Like, just something yeah. disgusting. <laughs> okay. So, this, here are the victims of this crime. Hundreds of family members were left in limbo for months waiting for identification of their deceased relatives so they could properly rebury them. So a lot of the people so in sad. this cemetery weren't really able to be identified, but a lot of people, you know, were had been officially buried there and their relatives and descendants knew that, that, that they had been buried there and so cared about properly reburying them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and throughout his tenure on the project, Gary Rex Walters seemed to make apparently arbitrary decisions about which families to return items found in graves to. The for fuck? example, yeah, he thought that he was in charge. Um, for example, he refused to give one deceased person's relative um, the gold upper plate. I think they mean like teeth. Uh, yeah. To one person, but he decided to gift costume jewelry found in another grave no. to another person. No. Mm -hmm. no. That's, not, that's not okay. Of course, he had no right to strip any of the remains of any of these items, even to return them to relatives. Like, they were buried with those items. Right. Right. Including some of them in their mouths. Well, okay. where their mouths used to be. Okay. So Once you're decayed enough, that just job. falls right out. Okay. So, just um, the in the case of the four <laughs> coffins in Gary Rex Walters' basement, Detective Wheatley not only needed to either corroborate or contradict the Guatemala story... But if Gary Rex was lying, investigators would then need to verify whether the remains were stolen historical artifacts or if there was something more sinister, like maybe murder. Mm. Oh, bum, bum, oh, bum. There's been a murder in Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil over here. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> oh. I love I know, that. I love movie. that book. Okay. In order. Ooh, they made a book out of that? You. I love both the movie, but the book is really great. Okay. Never heard of it. What is a book exactly? Okay. Yeah, I meant the word book. Not Midnight in the Garden. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> in order to jibe with Gary Rex Walters' story, the forensic anthropologists would have had to detect a Native American haplogroup in all of the sampled remains. So 100% of the sampled remains. And while three of the four samples that yielded sequenceable uh, DNA did have HVR1s consistent with Native American ancestry, so three out of four were Native American, one sample placed the mitochondrial genome within West African haplogroups. Mm. Quote, we did not find overlap in the Latin American region where the archaeologist was claiming that the bones were from. We did find overlap in the St. Louis area. Mm. He's been caught. Further analysis revealed that the remains were coming from multiple different archaeological sites from various regions. So Gary Rex Walters was a serial archaeological grave robber. Ick. Shortened to just grave robber. A yeah. douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. A douchebag. That too. <laughs> and yet, no... He was a massive dude. <laughs> we His did isotopic analysis concluded. strong correlation with a douchebag douche <laughs> haplogroup. 
his douche haplo group <laughs> off the charts. <laughs> Unlike Fantastic. anything we've ever seen. Ever seen. <laughs> it's alarming. All of his isotopes were unstable. <laughs> And they yet. were all in blue wigs. <laughs> <laughs> and yet no charges were filed against Gary Rex oh, Walters. God. How? Howard Scub. <laughs> and he committed the, multiple crimes. Yep, yep, yep. And they spent a lot Shit of happens, money y'all. to verify that he had committed these crimes to yeah, do all this, this testing. Yeah, this shit's expensive. My and God. the wooden coffins, along with all of the non-human artifacts that they'd seized from his residence, were returned to him. Stop. Yeah, they gave it back. The shit that Even he'd stolen bongs? from graves. Oh, I don't know about the bongs. Okay. This ain't right. <laughs> okay. This no, ain't it's super not right. right. To quote Dr. Did they Hughes, identify? Did they identify the victims themselves? Not as individuals, no. But they were like, okay, this femur is most definitely from, or this cranium is most definitely from, like, someone of African descent who grew up in the St. Louis region. Okay. And they they probably didn't have, like, DNA testing or whatever. Right. They didn't have, like, DNA on file for most of the Uh individuals that had been buried. Um, So then if there were only four coffins... Did he just dig up bodies, or were there multiple bodies in one coffin when he dug them up? The coffins were probably from Guatemala. I don't know for sure. Um, But then he probably just added bones and other artifacts from other digs and Mm. piled them all together. He's yeah, mixing them because up. He's a horrible archaeologist, first of real, all. Yeah, come on. You should lose his you license. fired for being an archaeologist. You should lose his <laughs> license. <laughs> I mean. That's definitely how it works. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was also very offended at the jumble. Like, you'd think that he would have, like, demarcated shelves. Get, like, an Ikea. He treated them like a mixed salad Go shaker. Go to that container store, for God's sake. Yeah, get a label maker, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Get a grow okay. up. So, to quote Dr. Hughes, one of the forensic anthropologists who worked on the case, quote, it's kind of sad. No charges were filed. This is the hard part about the work. When there's no closure and there's no proper resolution for those individuals whose family members are kept in this guy's house. It's like, yeah, 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 pretty fucking much. That's so yep. fucked up. That's and so fucked up. And it doesn't even up. matter that they didn't know who those individuals were. It's just an offense to the entire community. Like, that's, it's yeah. really bad. It's awful. He did the exact fucking opposite of what he was literally paid to do. Um, however, as of January 2017, the Morgan County Sheriff's Office confirmed it was still attempting to trace the skeletal remains back to missing persons in the area as well as missing remains from that cemetery. Um, so there's, they claim that they're still trying to trace the remains to specific people. Um, many of the individuals thought to have been buried in that St. Louis cemetery uh, slash African-American like mass grave site have yet to be found and identified. One man told reporters, they made a mistake when they lost my daughter. I won't stop fighting to find her. I never will. Aww. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. Yeah, because the the cemetery obviously it spanned a, a long period of time, so some were more recent than others. But yeah, right. So that is fucking Ugh, that's Gary so fucked Rex, up. isn't that fucked? Yeah. Mhm. Scub. <laughs> I need to look up the official name of that Scranton Strangler. Still think he should lose his license. New evidence in the office points to Toby as say, the Scranton Strangler. I was going to say, wasn't Toby the Scranton Strangler? <laughs> no, he, he was, was on, on the jury. The, he was on the jury for it and then, like, felt bad and went to visit him in prison and got strangled <laughs> by the Scranton Strangler. <laughs> Did he die? Is that how Toby George died? Howard Scub. No, he didn't die, but he had, like, a <laughs> neck brace and, like, damaged vocal cords. <laughs> 
George Howard Scub S K U B. It's the grossest. Okay, but actually, if you had committed a murder and somebody else was blamed for it, and just by chance you were selected to be on that jury. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That'd be cool. You probably would not convict make it through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guilty real. as sin. Oh. I believe in the death penalty. Oh God. Oh my All God. Right. <laughs> Here we go, Kenyon. <laughs> Another thing you have in common with. She's kidding. She's I'm kidding. kidding. She's kidding. I'm kidding. She's kidding. <laughs> She's kidding. Right. We can do this. Just Let's here do to protect you. Okay. Lola is a female-founded company offering a line of organic cotton tampons, pads, and liners. And they now offer sex products, too. Yes, we've made it, y'all. Yeah, we have. (laughs) Lola makes your month a little bit easier, and we could all use a little bit easier. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Their Mm -hmm. subscription is fully customizable, so you can choose your mix of products. Absorbency, number of boxes, frequency of delivery. Um, Lola's subscription is super flexible, and you can change, skip, or cancel your subscription at any time. It's super mm-hmm. helpful for me because I literally buy in bulk from Lola and then take back a suitcase of tampons and liners and Parmesan cheese. Parmesan. <laughs> TSA um, has so many questions. Yeah, I am <laughs> on a list, but you know what? It's worth <laughs> it to have Lola tampons. Um And in addition, the products you can choose from organic cotton tampons available with BPA-free plastic applicator. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Keep Um, it out. (laughs) Or an environmentally friendly non-applicator format, which I know Lucy prefers. Yes, Um, yes, 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 yes. They also have pads, liners, all natural cleansing wipes, or you can add a box of each, mix it up, do what works for you. I love it. Um, the Sex by Lola line is also available for subscription. I am on the next one on birth control implants, so I don't really get a period, but Lola offers a lot of products that I love to use. Um, you can add this subscription to your period subscription, so everything's conveniently delivered on your ideal schedule, which is super awesome. My personal favorite feature is their personal lubricant. Mm-hmm. This lube is the Cadillac of lubes. It features a <laughs> mess-free one-click pump symptom system. Sorry, It features a mess-free one-click pump system. So when you're like in the act and you just want to reach bedside, give a pump and continue. It's so convenient. Mm-hmm. I have done this. It's a water-based <laughs> formula. It's hypoallergenic. It's made with 95% organic ingredients to create a long-lasting lubricant and can attest correct that perfectly (laughs) mimics natural feminine moisture and maintains a healthy pH balance. Um, The the basic ingredients in here are it's water-based. It's made with aloe vera. Like it couldn't get much simpler than that. Benefits, that mess-free dispenser, long-lasting glide. It's made without irritating chemicals. It's gynecologist approved. It's hypoallergenic. It's formulated to help maintain a healthy pH. It's safe to use while trying to conceive. It doesn't have a weird smell. There's no fragrance. There aren't parabens. There aren't petrochemicals, glycerin, synthetic flavors. Like, keep that stuff out of my lube. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Mm -hmm. remove nail polish, No, you couldn't. You couldn't Mm -hmm. get paint off of a boat with this bad boy. (laughs) Uh, I love it. I love it. I can't endorse it highly enough. So you know you want it, too. So for 40% off all subscriptions, visit MyLola.com and enter promo code GALS40 when you subscribe. So, again, that's 40% off all subscriptions. Go to mylola.com, M-Y-L-O-L-A.com, enter promo code GALS40, G-A-L-S-4-0, when you subscribe for that sweet, sweet discount. Do it. Treat your parts. Treat your month. Songfinch is a personalized gifting company that brings stories, feelings, so many and feelings. memories. <laughs> to life through one of a kind songs with personalized songs starting at $99 and delivered within seven days. Their community of professional songwriters will hand craft the best gift you can ever give. Mm-hmm. And Kenya knows that firsthand because we gifted a song to her. You know it. Yes, you did. And yes, I cried. And yes, I listened to it kind of a crazy number of times. It's yep. like actually a really good song. It's so good. It's a really good song. I have good it on a song. playlist. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> they did a great job. Mm-hmm. So your personalized songs start at $99, and like she said, they're delivered within seven days. Um, the songwriting community of 350 plus professional musicians and growing, they're going to team mm-hmm. you up with somebody and they're going to mm-hmm. do an amazing job. The guy that we got, I selected an R&B style because I know Kenyon very well. <laughs> He's incredible. Yep. Incredible. We follow him on Twitter. Oh and my God. maybe I at him way too often. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amanda stalks him. It's fine. Just but no, on he did Twitter. such a good job. He's a real person. <laughs> He's very talented. And I had the best time setting up this whole thing thing you go go Mm -hmm. through you kind of take a little quiz again we love the quizzes Mm -hmm. you put in some special memories some things that this person likes and then you know like sort of an overall message you want to convey possibly and they just they have a little slideshow that like if you give them photos they'll put a slideshow that plays Mm -hmm. with the song it's so cute we love it Mm -hmm. so it was amazing once they write your song that song lives on a personal url called your story homepage, where you can see that that slideshow of photos and you can listen and download the song, read the lyrics, learn about your songwriter, share your song, add it to your playlist, listen to it constantly, whatever yeah. works for you. Mm-hmm. I love it. And yeah, this is such a cool and unique gift because you can gift it for weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, Mother's Day and Father's Day. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, people. Mm-hmm. And maybe mm-hmm. I want to use one like I have been urging everybody else in the world to do to break up with somebody. How awesome <laughs> would that be? Or to send a vengeful version of it to an ex-lover um also (laughs) christmas is right around the corner maybe someone's about to have a baby and you want to welcome this new beautiful baby into the world with their own song i'm already oh my god oh my ovaries i know how incredible would that be so so you (laughs) can give this amazing gift by going to songfinch.com and using our promo code gals to get 20 bucks off your personalized song from scratch so do it Go to songfinch.com, enter promo code GALS to get 20 bucks off that personalized song from scratch. You won't regret it. The experience on your end is super fun, and the person who receives this gift is absolutely not going to regret it. Treat there your will ears. be tears. Oh, yeah. Treat yo ears with tears. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. ButcherBox delivers healthy, 100% grass-fed and finished beef free-range organic chicken, and heritage breed pork directly to your door on a monthly basis. Monthly meat! Mm -hmm. It's so good. All of their (laughs) products are humanely raised, very important, and never, ever given antibiotics or hormones, also very important. Love it. Yes. It's hard to find high-quality meat that you can trust. Don't we know it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. ButcherBox is changing that, changing the game, and they offer free shipping anywhere in the lower 48 states of Mm -hmm. these United States. If only dating were as convenient as (laughs) ButcherBox. I'm always on the search for trusted meat. And not only is this convenient, (laughs) the taste is unbelievable. There is actually a huge difference in flavor between animals raised on pasture and those raised fed in concentrated animal feedlot operations. Mm. Do your research. This stuff is top of the line. It's actually really funny. So I have a package thief at my apartment, so I have everything sent to my work, which is this really lovely little restaurant that I work at in Minneapolis. And the owner and head chef was there when I got to pick this package (laughs) up, and I was like, let's open it and check out this meat. And he was so jealous. Drooling. He was like yeah. shopping through my butcher box and I'm like, yeah. uh, no, this is all for me. It's sorry. I Sign opened up mine yourself. in front of my husband and he was extremely Salvating. jealous. And it's amazing. I mean, I had bacon in there. I had something to make pot roast with. I had chicken. I had pork. I had like every run of the gamut. I had everything mm-hmm. you could possibly want. And it sends you this really cool little booklet with recipes So it will send you information on what you can do with those cuts of meat because I'm not super good at cooking. So this gives you all the tools that you need to follow their recipe with the meat that they send you and you can really create something amazing. I love it. And throw it it in Mm -hmm. your freezer for like whenever you have time. You don't need to eat it all in one day, although that'd be a really fun experiment. Yeah, it would. Um, There's also no commitment, and you can cancel easily at any time. So to get $40 off ButcherBox and free bacon. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Free bacon. Did we say free bacon? Free bacon. Free bacon. Did I mention free bacon? God, free bacon. (laughs) 
<laughs> and $40 off ButcherBox when Ooh. you order now. So that is $20 off your first two boxes plus bacon. 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 <laughs> in your first box. Bacon, y'all. B-A-C-O-N. This is the best um, offer we've ever given. <laughs> it really is. Go to ButcherBox.com and enter the promo code GALS, G-A-L-S, at checkout to get this amazing offer. Treat yo meat. Treat yo meat. All right. Are we ready for my cast? Cast. Yeah. My cast? Yeah. It's a little less, uh, no, it's pretty fucked up. Um, <laughs> but I just want to be very clear in my opening sentence. The old saying, you are what you eat, might hold the clue to unraveling the mysterious identity of a woman found dead nearly two decades ago in Wisconsin who may have been raised in wow. Canada. Yes, because the diet is quite different between Canada and Wisconsin. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it shapes our bones. Okay. Sure does. In an isotope type tracking way. Okay. Cats in wigs. <laughs> <laughs> the young woman's body was discovered on the edge of a cornfield no- near, I think it's Racine, Wisconsin. I think it's Racine. 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 I am racing to figure out how to pronounce this. <laughs> Um, by a man walking his dog on July 21st, 1999. According to Caroline Schweitzer, supervisor of forensic services with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in Virginia, a great organization, by the way. She had only been there less than about 24 hours, Schweitzer said. She was facially recognizable. If someone saw her picture, they would know who she was. The woman had many distinguishing features, including curly red-brown hair, Ears pierced twice and a Western shirt embroidered with red flowers that she was wearing. But despite that, nobody came forward to identify her. And from the beginning, there were deeply troubling signs about her origins. Her teeth were in very poor condition and her slight body was obviously malnourished. The malnourished woman may have been mentally disabled. Apparently in the autopsy, there was some sign of that. I don't know what Mm -hmm. that led to or like what condition she may have had. That was just in... Several mm-hmm. of the reports that I read might have been like a hygiene she had thing. A, isn't that isn't yeah, that a, cover, I mean, a kind of a good indicator of that kind of thing? It depends. It I mean, could that have could be an been. Indicator it could have been anything. It could have been yeah, bone drugs, structure, homelessness. Been, yeah. yeah, like the hygiene thing is kind of hard to pinpoint, but you know. But her um, teeth were in poor condition. Exactly. She had a cauliflower ear deformity, which likely resulted from abuse. Oh. It's believed that she was most likely... Now, this window is kind of big, 18 to 30 years old. So they couldn't even really wow. close the gap on how old she was. If they yeah. found me, they would not be wondering if I was 18, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Between 70 and 90 years old. She's completely decomposed, except for this mass of cellulite that has just really <laughs> persisted. With my back. <laughs> Her warped oh, spinal God. cord indicates a life of heavy lifting. <laughs> Appeared de- alien in nature. <laughs> She had developed numerous <laughs> bone spurs, <laughs> oh, but her nails okay. were in great condition. Her nails <laughs> they were on fleek. Okay. Uh, <laughs> fabulous. All right. Back to this really oh, tragic so case. Um, <laughs> uh, although she may have been up to 35, again, her teeth were not well cared for. Her front incisors protruded from the mouth. So like it also, other than the decay, it also looks like she never would have had braces or like really con- any consistent dental care. Okay. Some no, teeth no were missing. No orthodontia. No. Her curly hair was reddish brown, collar length, and appeared to have blonde highlights. Her eyes were either brown or green or hazel, so like darker eyes. Um, Two earrings in each of her ears. (coughs) Excuse me. She had visible bruises and cuts across her body and a fractured nose. God. Again, she wore a man's shirt. It was gray in color with a floral, a red floral design on the front. And we'll post photos as well. Um, After contacting the shirt's manufacturer, it was learned that this type of shirt was first sold in 1984. She was also wearing black sweatpants. She was not wearing shoes on the side of the road in Wisconsin. Mm. Um, 
But even more alarming was the extensive physical abuse that appeared to have taken place over, over several weeks before her death. Because, you know, they can see that in an autopsy on, like, old bruising and bone fracture mm-hmm. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, how much had healed versus how much was still, like, fresh. Yeah, that exactly. bruising is deep. Mm-hmm. When she was discovered, she was obviously beaten and horrifically tortured prior to her death, said lead investigator Tracy Heinz with the ra- Racine. Is that how yeah. you pronounce it? I think Racine. so. Cool. County Sheriff's Office. And that led investigators to the conclusion that she might have been held against her will for some time before she was beaten and left for dead. Yeah, your case is definitely worse than mine. Yeah, soup's worse. Somebody had to do it. Yeah. With very little evidence to go on, the case rolled to a standstill quite promptly. Initially, four detectives were assigned to the case, but by November of that same year, the number dwindled just to two, just because they have to take resources away because we don't have enough ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Detectives Jim Dean and Eileen Riley traveled to homeless shelters throughout Wisconsin and spoke with pediatric and dental offices throughout the country. They also made contact with agencies that work with disabled children in the hopes that one may have recognized the deceased woman. The case got really personal for the two detectives who were working it and had worked and solved numerous other missing person cases. This was like sort of their wheelhouse is working on missing persons, which I think would be really hard. That would be so hard. Because unfortunately it it so often ends in tragedy and not in returning these people safely or home. just or just doesn't like end at all. No answers. Yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Never knowing. That would be really plaguing. Yeah. Um, quote, I constantly dwell on it. Riley said, I wonder if she ever smiled. She must have smiled when she was a little kid. She certainly didn't have much to smile about in the last year of her life. Mm-hmm. Both mm-hmm. Dean and Riley acted as the young woman's family during her funeral service. There were like 50 people that came to the funeral, but nobody really knew who she was. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quote, I just sat there during the funeral and all I could think of was this could be my daughter lying in that grave with a Jane Doe tag on her. I kept wondering where in the hell are her parents? And I'd like to think that if it were my child, someone would be pulling out all of the stops to find her identity and find her killer. Mm -hmm. The funeral service was paid for with donations from local businesses. The community wanted to give her the dignity and death that she was denied in life. I think that's really Mm -hmm. lovely, actually. Yeah. Um, Reverend Jeffrey M. Thielen told the crowd gathered at the Drager Langendorf funeral home that, quote, a young woman lying in this casket is a stark and terrible reminder of everything that is painful and cruel in this life. Shortly after her funeral, the detectives thought they had cracked the case when a lead come came in from a Fond du Lac homeless shelter. When they drove out to the homeless shelter to show the residents a picture of Racing County Jane Doe, that's what they'd been calling her, They were all adamant that it was a woman that often stayed at the homeless shelter. However, there was one glaring inconsistency which could not be ignored. Unlike Racing County Jane Doe, the Fond du Lac woman had absolutely no teeth whatsoever. Mm. Several reconstructions of the woman's face have been released over the years in the hopes that somebody could potentially recognize her. Her remains were then exhumed in 2013, so like well over a decade later, for more advanced forensic testing to be conducted in Milwaukee. This led to another artist rendering a more up-to-date composite. Quote, I think anytime we have an individual who is badly beaten, murdered, and left as trash in our community, any day is too long, said Racine County Sheriff Christopher Schmeling. Mm. So basically, this has been a case that, like, this county has been focusing on in some way, shape, or form for, you know, going on 30 years now. And mm-hmm. it's, like, still super it's fucked up. It's very fucked up, but on, it's, on some level, I'm glad that the entire community, like cares is rallying yeah Yeah. Yeah. so you can look on the drive slash blog um one of these photos that's like a four screen side by side the top like the left side of the screen that's actually an autopsy photo of her with like this is how they're basing some of the reconstruction whoa and then there's other ones where they've updated some of the reconstruction so the one that's like really really detailed almost looks like a elementary school or like a high school photo photo. um i just think these reconstructions are pretty fascinating actually and like can be very detailed how i'm so uh, she was so well preserved when found Mm. well she was only in the ditch they said for about 24 hours after being killed oh i thought it was longer than that okay no so they found her right away and did the autopsy right away and like collected it but this was in the this is 1999 what time of year was so it's it like too? they got everything they could um they said it was rainy and wet so it's probably like either early fall or spring okay. i don't remember because if it's cold that it had makes to have been fall because it 
It had to have been like late summer, early fall, because then they talked about how in November. Oh, okay. Like they they mm-hmm. started, they had to go down from four investigators to two investigators. So I imagine she was found sometime during the summer. Wow. Um, multiple reconstructions were made of the victim's face. In 2012, an additional reconstruction was created by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, and there are several different versions of the composite that exist that show different facial expressions, which is pretty standard. Over the years, Heinz and others uh, searched multiple U.S. missing persons databases and used the facial reconstruction software to create photographs, posters, Facebook posts, everything they could. But they were never able to track down the case of the woman known only as Jane Doe 1999. Then, in 2013, they exhumed her remains for DNA testing, but still came up empty-handed. Again? Empty-handed. Or was that the At, one time? Yeah. No, this is the same. Okay. This is the same time. At one time, she was thought to be a young woman named Audrina Bowman, who is presumed to have run away from her adoptive parents' house in Hamilton, Michigan, on March 11th, 1989. But DNA profiling via her mother, Kathy, demonstrated that they were not the same person. Missing persons such as Audra um, and other young girls that it sounds like have gone missing, Tina, Ambrosio, and Karen Wells have been ruled out. So these are like famous, semi-famous, like Midwest missing persons cases. Mm-hmm. Some also believe that this case could be linked to the murder of Mary Kate Chimizo, a previously unidentified victim who was discovered in Lake County, Illinois. Um, this uh, Chimizo was also found malnourished, had poor uh, dental hygiene, and had been beaten to death. So there were some similarities there. Um, Three arrests were made in her case and Kate's case, but none, no one was ever convicted. Mm. So that's, that case still remains unsolved, too. So Heinz says, we, we have her DNA, um, but if we don't know who she is, we're kind of stuck. Like, they don't know who to test it against. Mm-hmm. So the decision was made to send fragments of her bone and hair to researchers at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. for heard a process called Stable, <laughs> ever heard of it? <laughs> stable Isotope Analysis. Yes, finally. <laughs> Here we are. So. Anthropologists. <laughs> so here's what isotope analysis is. <laughs> A cat has two wigs. (laughs) Three. Three. Three wigs. So a cat gets sweaty and its wig falls off. it tears its wig off. Um, (laughs) Calm down. Anthropologists have used stable isotope analysis for years to track the migrations of ancient humans, as we've discussed. Criminal investigators also use it to trace the origins of explosives and drugs, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, we talked about that. Remember Um, when you weren't listening during the segment? I know. I hated your segment. (laughs) Um, And increasingly in cases like this one, it is used to try to determine the origin of unidentified individuals. Mm -hmm. But unlike DNA analysis, which can provide a near-perfect match with an individual, stable isotope analysis cannot identify people, as we know. What it can reveal instead are subtle clues about diet, you are what you eat, (laughs) geography, and movements of a person in the months and years before their death. Um, and then, I mean, again, I wasn't really listening, so I don't know how much you talked about mass spectrometers. <laughs> we talked about it. Yeah. We both talked we about did. it. Cool. Great. God. Great. Um, so, Welcome. Quote, to quote Heinz, <laughs> basically, you are what you eat. I will cling to this until I die. Those stable isotopes stay in different parts of your body as you grow. And she explains that the levels of these various isotopes will vary depending on where you live in the world. In the case of Jane Doe 1999, those clues led investigators to expand their search area far wider than before, which is great. Mm. What they learned was that the young woman who they believed to be, again, between the ages of like 18 and 30, may have been from <clears throat> or spent several years in somewhere within a broad stretch of southern Canada between British Columbia and Newfoundland or possibly even parts of the western U.S. such as Alaska or Montana. Mm. So, like, yeah, that's a big area, but it's a way... It's it different. It's the not search. the Midwest, yeah. Yeah, they're not looking in fucking Wisconsin and mm-hmm. Michigan. Mm-hmm. While the new clues expanded the search area to a huge swath of new territory, they also helped investigators focus on new sources for clues. Heinz had hoped to receive tips from people north of the border, and they started pouring in after this information was released. So they released this information in, like, 2014, and there have been some follow-ups along the way because they want to keep this case out there. Mm -hmm. Um, So Heinz said, yes, I've been very busy. The tips are all appreciated. They can lead to something or lead to ruling something out. Heinz says, while it will take a long time to prioritize new tips and run down every clue, which is like what they're fucking doing. They're going down every road, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. The cold case is one that she is devoted to cracking one day. 
quote, if it is a sleepless night at home, I will pull out this case and work on it from there. This is why I came back to the detective bureau. I specifically asked for this case because she deserves more than this, no matter who she was or where she lived. Mm -hmm. So this woman, Tracy Hines, has been like hopelessly devoted to this case as she's even moved in and out of this career, which I I think is amazing. She's like a movie. I know. Mm -hmm. She's literally a character from a movie. It's incredible. Ultimately, Heinz has two goals. The first is identifying the young woman found battered and left for dead on the side of the road nearly three decades ago now. Uh, more than three decades. No, near. Yeah, uh, coming on three decades. Math is hard. What's so a decade? Um, <laughs> and give her back a name. And the other is to bring those who are responsible for this to justice. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to share these phone numbers. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone out there knows something mm-hmm. like that podcast. Someone knows something. Someone always fucking knows something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So David Ridgen is you, a god. Hundred percent. So if you have any information that could be linked to this case of Jane Doe found in Wisconsin in 1999, call one eight hundred eight four three five six seven eight. And Detective Hines has actually also provided their direct line at 262-636-3190. Let's and, crack it. Yeah, and there will be photos on the blog of uh, this Jane Doe, so. Yep, there's her, uh, like, FBI um, missing persons poster with some additional information on it, phone numbers on it, places that you can call, the composite sketches of her. Um, it would be really amazing if at some point you know, we could figure out what happened to this poor thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She deserves it. Wow. Jesus. This is hard. You are what you eat. Okay. You wigged cat. You wigged cat. Special. On that note, though. You goddamn wigged cat. Can we please go to the drive and observe the six photos of Ray that I uploaded with his wig on? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. What an unstable isotope. (laughs) Ray. He's also in a tutu. Ray hates this yeah. wig. <laughs> the dead eyes are worse than Kenyon's in that photo where he's on the table. Yeah. And he's looking up at you like, Mommy, why would you do this to me? Ray and I might be related because we have the same dead eyes. Same dead <laughs> And like similar colored hair. Yeah. Ray's is a little redder than yours, but you both have that nice, healthy yeah. blonde. Yeah. Shiny. <laughs> you must have the same diet because nice you are what you eat. Okay. Stop. Your hair isotopes would be so healthy. Oh Special thanks this week <laughs> to fan picker Remy Juarez, not to be confused with the famed forensic anthropologist, Dr. Indeed. Juarez. Dr. Remy Juarez. <laughs> Thank you very much for this amazing oh topic God. that Bless we you. butcher. <laughs> Indeed. Also, thank you. Wait, do we? We're doing this, right? Yeah, we're fully let's just doing this. Do it. Okay, cool. Also, thank you to Karen Taylor. You were tailor made for us. <laughs> we appreciate your five dollar a month donation. <laughs> um, also, I want to interject that I have a joke for the end of the episode. So, if you're starting to tune out, <laughs> don't. Yes. <laughs> You've only forgotten the last. 92 times. You know, not all of our (laughs) true crime topics warrant a joke, but... (laughs) Not with that attitude, they don't. Uh, This might be a typo. You know what's a joke? Your piss poor attitude. Okay. Thank you also to Nida Enriquez. Nida? Hello, Nida. Nida. Nida, girl. Mm. Nida hardly knew (laughs) us. The old Shout out by. to I Be a Punk. Woo! $5 a month from this amazing I punk. think you misspelled Ikea Sweet Punk. punk. <laughs> 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 the the rarest of all the punks. The Ikea <laughs> Punk. The hardest to put together. Legs. <laughs> anyway. Oh my god, I watched a Thank video series called High Kia, which is... People oh, who uh, take acid and then try to put together their your, IKEA uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that is New a million podcast. dollar podcast. <laughs> I feel like that's more of a visual medium. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. That for would sure. not be as funny to listen to. At one point in the middle of it, the guy just goes to the window and just looks out <laughs> for like ever. And it's like, <laughs> man, needs this a break. Is really cool. <laughs> Needs a break. 
<laughs> uh, okay. Special thanks to Andrea King. You are the king. We bow before you. Of the world. We, we kiss your rings, Andrea King. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Samantha, who needs no last name or maybe first name. Mm-hmm. I don't know Share. what your name is. <laughs> I don't know how you live. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Bitch, I don't know Thank you, you so do. much, Samantha. <laughs> Thank you to Andrea Mesquita. The state bird of Minnesota is the yeah. Mesquita. <laughs> <laughs> we need you, Andrea Mesquita. Mesquita. <laughs> <laughs> We're not batting you away, Andrea Mesquita. <laughs> don't bite me, Andrea Mesquita. You cause a little itch on you me. You can stop yourself with our blood. <laughs> And special thanks to Nan. <laughs> Could be non. Non sequitur. <laughs> non other than Nan. <laughs> Nan other. Get it. <laughs> the non. Big thank you to Fiona Riley. You've got us all riled up with your $5 a month donation. Fiona hardly knew okay. her. Okay, Holly Beeler. <laughs> We're making a beeline for you, Holly Beeler. Beeler? Hardly oh, do. Uh, yeah, I'm quitting. Yes. I'm quitting the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it works for everyone. Except, um, except for, for Kate Jones. It does not work for Kate Jones. Uh, you're the Indiana We're Jones Jonesing to my for, yeah. fear of snakes. We don't hate Kate. <laughs> Sure don't. <laughs> Kate plus eight, actually five Kater, hardly dollars knew a month. Her. Kate okay. hardly oh, knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jessica Paulus, your your prowess. We are powerless against your charm, generosity, <laughs> yeah. charm. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. We got oh. you. Elise Anna. Elise. Anna hardly knew her. <laughs> Elise. We didn't say Anna hardly knew her. <laughs> we, we did, though. We did. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things to see, and we have a couple of them tonight, are increased monthly donations. Elizabeth Basish, or Basic, or Basich. You are not increased, basic. Not even close. You've increased your donation from two to five bucks a month. Amazing. I love when you show yes, your love. Yes, friendly reminder, you can increase your pledge. At any time. <laughs> if we prove to be doing a good job or something. We don't. <laughs> All right, kicking off our uh, $10 a month level, which will get you a free fucking patriarchy flexible wine glass in the mail, is Brooke. Mm. And wine tastes so sweet out of that FP It glass. really does. Mm-hmm. Don't cut your lips, though. Bro- don't. <laughs> Brooke v- Vitens. Lucy aggressively sips from her glass. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So she's had some incidents. <laughs> My glass is very smooth. <clears throat> Well, in Lucy's case, it's only user error. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not a problem with <laughs> the glass sure. itself. <laughs> Brooke Vitense, she... our love for you is Vitense. Intense. Intense. Jan, sweet, sweet, beautiful Jan. Serenity, Serenity by Jan. Serenity by Jan. <laughs> Thank you so much, babe. <laughs> babe, you know I have soft teeth. For donating ten dollars a month, bless well, you, Jan. Son of a preacher man, preacher, man. preacher Jan. <laughs> that one night, she made everything all right. All right. Okay, shout out to Elizabeth Took me West. by the hand, <laughs> made me West. a man. <laughs> Young woman, I can't. How well that I one night, the look, <laughs> was in the look was in his eyes. Okay. Stealing kisses from me on the fly. Heather Eubanks made time. <laughs> Increasing their donation. <laughs> <laughs> Learning from each other showing. Gonna to see how much that donation's growing. Eubanks? Hardly know The her. only one. Who could ever <laughs> Eubanks me? I'm really tired. All right. <laughs> I'm oh, sweating. Andrew Hoffman. Was a son of a preacher yeah. man. <laughs> Also increase their pledge from $5 to $10 a month. God bless. 
Love it. I have literally <laughs> sweat through my shirt. I know I'm regretting not putting on deodorant today. Or like showering in the last couple days. It's fine. Forever. Oh my God. Okay. And shout out to Alexandra Hitchcock. Woo. Hitchcock. Giving $25 Hardly a month. Cock. <laughs> Oh, you knew cock. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. Twenty five dollars a month. Up. You're getting an F. Oh, <laughs> you're getting you an F. Knew cock. Glass. Oh, honey, and you a tote bag. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and of course, thank you so much to our incredible sponsor, Talkspace, for forty five bucks off your first month of online therapy. Go to talkspace.com forward and slash. And here's your jokes. Oh. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> if H2O is the formula for water, what's the formula for ice? I already hate it. Any guesses? Uh, 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 I see. H2O <laughs> cubed. <laughs> oh, my God. Get out of here. That's Have so you heard dumb. the joke All about right, the two we- helium atoms? You said you had one joke. <laughs> one. <laughs> I hate it so much. Why do chemists like nitrates so much? Three. Three jokes. Nightshade? Why do chemists nit- like traits? nitrates so much? I don't know. Because they're cheaper than day rates. <laughs> oh my. I God. can't. I'm done. That was. Truly awful. That and one? with that said, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good, Lucy. Good job. Goodbye. <laughs> See you next Bye. week. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. More importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. We are a totally independent show, so if you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! In March of 2012, Israel Keys was pulled over outside of Lufkin, Texas. And in that moment, hundreds of lives would be forever changed, including mine. Join me on this strange, terrifying, and emotional journey as I attempt to find the missing, understand a killer, explore the impacts of crime, reconcile with those left behind, and subvert the genre of true crime. In the FBI files, they found images of over 40 missing persons on his computers. I think it's fair to say that Israel Keys had a fetish about missing people, which is why he wanted to ensure that his victims didn't get found. True Crime Bullshit premieres December 6th on Apple Podcasts and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Go to www.truecrimebullshit.com for more information.